Now, some people have been complaining, you know, eh, they downvoted me, they stole my steam, you know, and they're censoring me. And there's an article that's pretty emblematic of this, you know, you know, no offense to uh, at Garden of Eden, um, you know, for her article, the big deal. It's, it's actually a, a him. Oh, to hit well, she, well, <laughs> maybe a little bit of offense, you know, I just, I like the irony there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's just, you know, emblematic of it because there's so much whining about it, you know, like. So uh, I'm wondering, did you pick that article because I mentioned in it? Are you like, oh, are you? Like are you? Me? Yeah, totally. I'm stalking you. <laughs> That's what, yeah, I know. I'm just, I feel like you're putting me on the spot on my first time on the podcast. Um, I definitely add that to your drama post. <laughs> he was unfair. He put me on the spot. No, I'm volunteering this information. Um, so uh, Garden of Eden posted about a depression cure that uses colloidal gold. Oh, yes. That I consider pseudoscience. And so I flagged it. I see. I see. That Later, was my It was name. downvoted by Rene Nouveau, who's a big, big meanie. <laughs> It's true. Um, and, you know, that, that I find pseudoscience to be harmful to people, not just innocent fun that you're making $60 for selling your gold water, gold infused water, gold infused water. So what would you put it under? Uh, fraud, internet trolling, or intentional miscategorized content or spam? Uh, intentionally miscategorized content or spam because okay. it's not... That, that's the whole like problem I have with people who use pseudoscience. It's not science. If you had said, this is magic water that I blessed at the fountain of youth or whatever. That sounds then, like a pretty that's sweet. not using science to trick people. That's playing on people's faith, which is a whole other problem that I have an issue with. But <laughs> I use my downvote to reduce the traction that that post was getting because I don't want a depressed person who's desperate for a cure to come across this and think finally a cure for my my really serious illness that I should be going to a doctor to treat uh, I think it's exploitative it's uh, exploitation no I I think you're I think you're right I've seen other people do the same kind of um similar behavior i've also seen a certain revenge voting occur mm -hmm. which i'm yeah. not opposed to when it's done in the right way it's literally the um community punishing you for misusing a system and you, you get the idea really quick um it's or you just take offense and get freaking uh, downvoted to oblivion and you just become a nobody on the website having to restart your reputation with a new name and sometimes that's just not possible for certain people who've already exposed too much of themselves um and i've seen that occur where though uh i've i've seen it happen with a few people in the steam chat and we'll we they'll be like holy shit somebody downvoted me what the fuck and we'll go and double check that they'll post it up we'll double check be like they downvoted you okay that was a mistake on their part and like we'll, we we try to be the judge of that situation it's our remember george that tribal mentality <laughs> oh damn it's so, 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 yeah. <laughs> there was a quote in that article um from quinn i believe that's his name he's the the leader of the hippie commune um <laughs> Uh, I, I live in Santa Cruz, so I'm used to these sorts of things. Right. Um, but he says um, that he came into Steam Cla Abuse Classic and was like, hey, what's, what's going on? We need to resolve this amicably. Um, so in his article, he says, um, downvotes cause injury to the other party in oh. terms of reduced reputation and limited scope of reach. And it's like, like yeah. you reached yeah. through the computer and grabbed his neck and choked him. I mean, <laughs> no, I, that would have been a preferable. No, I, 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 <laughs> I was abusive with oh, my God. download. I only have one vote. And I did comment. And I said, I think what you're doing is wrong. I think you're profiteering off of people's suffering and it's wrong. And that's the, that's the appropriate downvote, in my opinion, to do. Uh, the yeah. appropriate way to downvote. If you just flag willy nilly. And uh, I mean, unless it's but I don't I don't have to justify my flag. If I flag no, somebody, you don't. 
there's no there's no rules about that i have to leave them a comment telling them why no absolutely not but keep in mind your character is dependent on uh other people recognizing whether or not they observe you uh using or misusing that flag system that's true because it is transparent because you can go to my esteemed profile and look at all my downvotes exactly and and so there is that little uh balance that you have to weigh when you're you when you are doing anything within the system of the blockchain and Mm -hmm. i think that too many people are treating this like the internet (laughs) (laughs) mommy he downvoted my post (laughs) (laughs) that's another thing i don't think that people get a get a sufficient inner introduction to steam it and how it differs from your other social media sites i don't think people are aware that they're actions are recorded that they have accountability for what they do and say on the blockchain Mm. and also for what you know some of the doxing and abuse that's happened not that the victims have any responsibility but i think that we should inform new users that hey this is that you we can't remove this content if you post something you're putting it out there so i just think there needs to be like a, a better terms of use or something when you sign up you know, when I made uh, the 47-minute uh, screencast and like 7,000-word tutorial that I posted a couple weeks ago, and I've shared it with uh, a bunch of people on my mailing list and whatnot, I stressed over and over again, you, you put something up there, content, a blog post, you know, whatever, that's permanent, that's for good, you can't delete mm-hmm. that, you know? And, uh, you know, another that should really be stressed, you know, but this, this whole downvoting thing, like people are like, well, you know, it's abusive downvoting. Well, you know what? Nobody has really defined what constitutes abuse on this platform yet. Downvoting is just like upvoting, you know, it's, it's, um, it's just part of how you interact with it. And I was on a podcast, uh, last week, the choice conversations podcast talking about steam it. And uh, the host, Chris uh, Stefanik, who's at Choice Convo on uh, Steemit, he said, you know, some, one of the critics came in and said, you know, you can, you can steal people's – okay, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little. It's okay. You can do that. Steal, but yeah. The, <laughs> this is my podcast. I can do what I want <laughs> out of my cold, dead hand. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, – de- so defamation – there's nothing against defamation of character here. Yeah. That's right. So, yeah, he's like, you know, uh, you know, somebody said, you know, well, you can steal people's uh, money you know, with your downvotes. So I was like, well, first of all, this makes me think of the book, uh, Who Stole My Cheese or Who Moved My Cheese, you know, like your payout. Nobody owes you a payout, you know, nobody owes you an upvote. You know, that's it's when, they, when your payout time closes, then you can say, that's my money, you know. But before that, you can't. That's not yours, you know? You're like, up to the whim of the market to objectively uh, evaluate your world. They're applying their subjective evaluation, but that algorithm comes up with some objective identified distribution of value. And you got to give that system time. Um, sorry, you're not going to have, you're not going to get everybody on board. No, I do think there are instances where downvotes are being abused. There's certain users who are just randomly downvoting people's content just to be a dick butt. Uh, <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Dick butt. <laughs> dick butt. <laughs> Dude, dick butts are all over Steam. So, um, you know, I, I, don't, uh, I don't think that you should use your downvotes in that way. Um, and if you have like some sort of super bot, so when I post about your, your rampant sexism on your podcast, George, I don't want you to stick your like 10,000 vo- voting bots against me. <laughs> I don't officially own those bots. <laughs> they can make up their own mind. <laughs> and so I, but I do think that we have to be careful. I mean, I, I, do try to protect original content on steam and, and flag plagiarism. Um, and so I have to be very careful with my downvote. So people aren't thinking that, Oh, she's just a negative Nancy and you know, she's just punishing these poor people. Mm. No, there's definitely, yeah. there's definitely that uh, reputation um, mm-hmm. that people will earn um, on this platform that was not able to be created on any other platform. I, I think, especially if you really um, match character, because and once this, once this whole platform really gets live and more and more people are interviewing people from the platform in real life, um, 
you're really going to start you're going to start getting the down and dirty of these random Joes who are now trying to just go interview um, some, you know, steam it celebrities. They can be like, yes, that person is legit and, or no, that person's total bullshit. And it's, uh, you know, there's a consistency factor that we're able to now weigh where you can't really get that same kind of authenticity from, you know, previous uh, interviews. I don't trust shit. I don't almost trust anything I see on a, on a television screen and very little I, I see on the uh, computer screen as far as like videos are concerned. Yeah. Well, speaking of real life accountability, I think uh, one of us science fiction writers on the platform should write just a short story about how in a future cyberpunk, um, you know, world that, uh, you know, you maybe use the steam at bounty system to pay to assassinate someone who is downvoting your content. Ooh, I like how you threw that in a science fiction way rather than a suggestion. No, it, that was so. Oh, there's well, because a because it's the payouts are going to be worth. You know, if this was the size of Bitcoin, the the daily payout would be worth almost two million dollars, right? Uh, it, uh, yeah, but I think that the distribution of all like the value and everything would just scale. So it's actually going to probably be fairly consistent, which is still way more money than most people can ever make in a month. Uh, I shouldn't say ever, but it's a lot of more. It's a lot more money than a lot of people are used to making in a month without doing more work than just writing an article and throwing it up um, mm. on you know the, a good article. They usually have to do a significant amount of unrelated writing work, unrelated creative creative work to get that same payout. And um, so as it scales, I think we're just going to see a very similar uh, amount of. I think it'll scale just fine. Um, but that, uh, that assassination politics, I think is uh -huh. what that, what that's based off of. Um, you know, that's a, that's a whole can of worms that is, uh, yeah, but what about what about when the Russian mob gets involved in Steam it and they're posting not already <laughs> and they're posting stuff and then you accidentally downvote their post and they're like you know we're going to take care of this one you know uh, well I guess you know, I speaking of bounties and downvoting I kind of uh, found a, a piece of plagiarism recently of our dun, very dun, own. Dun. <laughs> Our very own misgivings, and I was oh. afraid that misgivings would send her mob of, you know, downvote bots to come and kill me. Um, but I, so far, that hasn't happened. Uh, <laughs> maybe after this podcast is aired, that right. will. Um, but uh, you know, I I just I googled her article and found that she had plagiarized um, half of it at least, and uh, you know, I. It's an assassination of sorts um, in that, that now her reputation is going to have to make up for that. Like, how, how do you explain that, that your behavior on the blockchain? So yeah. I don't want to assassinate anybody for good unless they really deserve it. No, but that, that, there's a difference between character assassination and holding people accountable for bullshit that they're doing there's a huge difference between the two and people uh, onlookers recognize that difference they can see where the intent is coming from they can they can make that character evaluation themselves especially the people that are currently on the platform and um there's a certain uh there's a certain mass of intellectuals and critical thinkers on the pl uh, a, a abundance of or a, a uh concentration of that you might not see in other areas of the internet um but as that'll that'll eventually change as i think it has talk. changed uh, I, I really do think that we've got a lot of people who aren't as engaged um i mean the people who cluster around me tend to be more engaged and i love that about my, my group of friends you're a but content I'm, creator but i'm but i'm looking at at the audience in general they're just a lot of people who i'm not sure if they're real robots or like, I, I don't know if they're cyborgs or they're just like... So uh, a fun little classification by the CIA uh, to recognize influence on the internet uh, puts one per, I think it's one or two percent of people as original content creators. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's like seven or eight percent or, or it's like five to eight percent as um, information sharers and distributors. Everybody else is just a lurker. Mm -hmm. So Interesting. Uh, 
Yeah, it's a, it's a nice, you know, and that's very important to know if you're trying to get your idea out there. It also gives you a little bit of consideration to how influential your own original words are. I think a lot of people don't realize that people are listening more than you may have thought, or maybe some people are too shy to speak and hey guys speak up people want to hear your voice but you know you you raise an interesting point there that reminds me of the episode i believe it was episode four with fair sim about witnesses <clears throat> in which he uh kind of dropped a, a bit of uh, insight on us there that although there are all these big whales you know now who have gotten there by dint of being the developers or being you know early miners and whatnot that the distribution of uh, steam power in the system over time is going to shift to the top content creators. Now, if only one to two percent of people are content creators, then you know I think that 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 could present a you know a a minor but you know it's worth thinking about threat to the steam system because if you're always going to have a lot a tons of steam power concentrated in one to two percent of the um, of the user base that's is that you know is that really does does that threaten the principle of decentralization i think part of the steam model though encourages content creators like i've never really blogged before i mean i post my rants on facebook but i and i've tried to blog but it's hard when there isn't a reward at the end of that and you don't even know if people are really engaging with you here on steam it i feel like encouraged to create content so I'm coming from a, a relatively new content creator standpoint where I'm like, oh God, I've got all these ideas. Yeah. I'm hoping that there are other people who are making that transition from just like lurky lose to like people who feel like they're empowered to do something and get rewarded for it. Yeah, and I think as a ontological design, which is the process of the environment shaping the character of the person and then we further reinforce that shaped character on ourselves onto the system further feedback that feedback loop of um, the environment affecting you and you on the environment Um, i think with that concept and the exposure to the decentralized nature of the blockchain and steam it in general i think we will eventually um, shift that content creator uh identified separation um i think eventually i I agree that original um two percent concentration of original content and that being where most of the money's going to go to i don't think is i think it might happen initially but i don't think it'll be a long-term problem because i think that this very system will encourage people to recognize that um they now have the potential to have their own voice and actually make a living uh, on their own with the, de- the decentralized nature. I think that everybody, it's, it's an abundant system. It's a very, very unique model and paradigm that has not occurred because we are now giving um, objective value to ideas um, beyond physical properties because of that digital, um, that digital number, that digital value to ideas that we, again, we accept is valuable. So it's very, I mean, it's a, there's a lot of philosophy and there's a lot of, um, I think the CIA is going to have to revise their number, maybe like more like 20% <laughs> content creators. I hope, hopefully it kills the CIA, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> no more All right. secrets. So let's move on to our final segment, which is uh, basically just about, uh, what we think, uh, steam it needs now. And, um, I just want to bring in a couple of things from, <clears throat> A uh, post from a few days ago by at Steam at blog about uh, the Steam 0.14.0 uh, release candidate. 